I'm being joined by a former presidential aspirant of the PDP, uh, Mazi uh, Sam Ohambua, who joins us from our Lagos studio. Thank you so much, and good evening to you. Let me get your view, first and foremost. Should there be any kind of worry from anybody? For those who have uh, thought that these meetings that you're seeing in Portacot mean something politically, from your own point of view as an insider, what is your view on it? Thank you, Shev, uh, for inviting me to this meeting uh, this, this evening. Um, to be sincere to you, uh, I, 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 for some of us who are not uh, used to, you know, mincing words, uh, we speak as we are led to speak the truth. Uh, every rightful, every right-thinking member of the party is worried about this uh, festering of this discordant um, situation, the, 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 the strife you are seeing and the conflict that we have seen. Uh, for me personally, it's a painful thing to me to see happen uh, because as I said before, PDP by up to now has the best chance to win the election in 2023. Uh, but we are taking too much time to resolve what I called apparently minor internal issues. They're, they're not so complicated. Nobody's contesting who won the primaries. That's where people get into trouble, you know. Even if there are issues as to uh, uh, the choice of a vice presidential candidate, these things could, could have been resolved speedily. This is almost three months. We did our primaries at the end of May. We're almost coming to the main, uh, end of August. I believe that we needed to have sorted this out before now. Before whatever anybody thinks, we are demarketing the party by allowing all this first train or every day when the newspaper talking about Wiki, talking about Atiku, I don't think that's what we should be spending time doing now. We should be focused on, you know, selling the manifesto of the party and beginning to get ready the candidate to start the campaigns and harmonize and um, harness all the resources that this party has. This party has a lot of resources, human, uh, intellect, uh, political strategies and uh, people who can sell this party and sell the candidate and sell the uh, position of the of the party. So, I personally have a worry that we seem not to have adequate um, or have put enough effort behind the reconciliation. Maybe we are not understanding that we are about to enter into a major political contest. Uh, it's not just a, a, APC, uh, which in itself you cannot just, you know, uh, discount being the party in power. There is a, there, there's, the, there's the factor of incumbency. Uh, despite its poor record, it has the power of incumbency. That's something we should contest with. There's a third, a, 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 a third force rising up every day and gaining ground. And we are, wa we are wasting time you know, in dealing with issues that are distracting us. I think we need, uh, our leaders need to wear a new hat. They need to put a new, a new strategy into this. Our leaders need to develop better conflict resol resolution um, uh, uh, virtues or recruit more people into the uh, leadership that can help bring these matters to a close. I don't think it's as complicated as it's as, is, as we are making it uh, look. And many supporters of PDP are getting weary just hearing this same story over and over. And I'm, and, and I'm being very sincere about it. I'm just, I'm just okay. hoping so, that we can yeah. do something. So I, I like to, yeah, yeah, Dr. Wambua, I, I like to, two, two angles quickly uh, is the fact that uh, one, we wonder that this shouldn't be difficult. But why does it look difficult for these so-called rift, rift to be resolved? Why? For me, it is shows that we do not have the adequate conflict resolution capacity, internal conflict resolution capacity. I really don't know why it should be so. We have the board of trustees. We have elders in the party. We have well-meaning people. Even the 
even, even the, the presidential aspirants are there waiting to be harnessed, to be used to help in dealing with so many of these issues that the party seems to be confronting. Uh, so I, I just, the only the, the way I put it is that we, do, we don't seem to have enough of um, uh, conflict revolution capacity or willingness or determination or the level of seriousness that some of us are putting to this. Maybe some people do not think it deserves that level of seriousness. That, for me, is the issue. Maybe human ego and uh, inappropriate understanding of how to you know, deal with issues. When a man has won a contest, it behoves on him to bring home, if it means visiting, cajoling, begging, because we have a big fight ahead. So we need to get everybody on board. And if I were, as, as, uh, as my friend uh, Dele spoke the other day, I mean, if, if it was me, <laughs> this matters will have been resolved the first, in fact, that weekend after the election. I mean, it will have been resolved or, or, or soon after that. Uh, but everybody has his style, and I believe that uh, our presidential candidate is an experienced politician, very versed, very experienced. And I do hope that those who are advising him understand the enormity of the problems we face and the consequences of this lethargy and dragging a small matter. I mean, it, it, people will say if you can't resolve ordinary internal conflict, and you have a country bedeviled with conflicts, bedeviled with, with all sorts of uh, problems, why, why, would it take this long to, to even resolve the security problem if we come to power in, 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 in 2023? I mean, the, 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 the security problem in one month or two, we should see the, the impact of the new government and the new leadership. So I just hope that. Uh, we will we would um, resolve this matter as quickly, take away all the ego, and become serious and and and, and project ourselves as leaders, not only as leaders, as people who want to win an election. Every day there's a headline uh, news. Let me let me, let me hop in again. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Quickly, sure. uh, if you were on the other side, uh, that is the Atiku Abubakar side, and you see all of these overtures these meetings in Port Harcourt, would it bother you at all? Because in Nigeria, there is no political movement or political uh, meeting that is for nothing. Politicians don't hold meetings for, 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 for meetings sake. There are purposes for these meetings. So if you see these kind of meetings and these closed door arrangements being done and engagements every day here and there in Port Harcourt, would you be bothered one of the greatest failures of people is to underrate competition. As CEO of a multinational for many years, and um, I, 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 I do not underrate competition, no matter how small they are. And every move the competitor makes in the marketplace causes an alarm for me. And I, I, I deploy forces to make sure we counter those forces quickly. Because you don't have a second chance. Every day the market sphere is being eroded by all this and uh, creating a higher level of dissonance. The problem of the party may not be as bad as it is looking, but media, they say perception is everything. And we need to pour water on this and put it off. Certainly, all those political visits everybody's coming to, if I'm chairman of the party or presidential candidate, I don't think I will sleep well. Uh, maybe because I do not have the kind of heart or spirit they have. I will sleep well. I will be sure that the next morning I fly to Port Harcourt or fly to wherever I need to fly and pour water on this and close this chapter so that we can move forward. That's my candid advice. I've offered this advice uh, through proxies uh, to, to, to the party leadership that we need to harness our resources. This, this party is bleeding right now. And if, as a healthcare professional, if there's bleeding going on anywhere, the first night I get some constriction and stop the bleeding. It is important because the hemorrhage can cause damage. The party has had enough time to sort out these problems, uh, these this disagreements that are not, uh, that they are not, and, and it's, I come to think of it, this is not the only one. The problem is that this is the one that is visible. And if we're taking so much time to finish this, how are we gonna deal with the others? The others are quiet, wondering and waiting when their own issues will be dealt with. So I think the party leadership has a call they should be humble and 
be dynamic and strategic in dealing with the party. Nigerians are ready to, to get PDP on board because as it stands now is the party that is best suited to take out, to change uh, the situation Nigerians are having, to rescue Nigeria, as we're saying, to restore Nigeria to a country that can, you know, aspire to be globally competitive, a, to build a country for which we all can call our own and which works for every Nigerian. That is the opportunity PDP has, all right. so, and I hope we do not uh, let it slip. Yeah, you, you were talking about the fact that this is perhaps not the only problem that the PDP is confronted with. Even the running mate of the PDP uh, to Atiku Abubakar, uh, Governor Okowa, in his own state of Delta, there is a problem because the governorship candidacy or the ticket of that party is being contested in court right now, and there is no clarity as to uh, who becomes the candidate of, the, of PDP in Delta State. Now, another problem is the leadership of the PDP. Now, we are made to understand uh, sources in the PDP in some meetings uh, that uh, when Senator Yocha Ayu was decided a consensus, uh, as a consensus candidate, he was made to sign an undertaking that if any candidate, a presidential candidate emerges from the North, he will resign his position. And there was an interview he granted to Vanguard newspaper. And let me read a portion of that uh, interview, sir. He says, if the PDP, I'm quoting part of uh, the response of uh, Senator Yocha Ayu in that interview, published in Vanguard newspaper, he said, and I quote, I'm a very democratic person, and I will do everything to promote the interest and image of my party. If the PDP says I should step down after a presidential uh, candidate emerges and happens to be from the North, I will be very glad to do so because what we want is to take over the government and run the government in the interest of so Nigerians. So I will sacrifice anything to ensure that my party wins, end of quote, those are some of the uh, responses from um, Senator Yocha Ayu to the Vanguard newspaper. Now, we understand now that some of the talks is that Senator Yocha Ayu should step aside. How are you digesting this kind of scenario and what has become a tough chew for the PDP? Again, uh, I, 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 I keep wondering, uh, you know, politicians have been, have been painted with all sorts of brushes. One of them is that you don't rely on their words. One of them is that they are not trustworthy. One of them is that many of them are not principled. But I, I, I have met Dr. Ayucha, uh, Ayucha Ayu, and, and he looked to me like a principled person. I have, I have evidence uh, in my own experience to think that he's principled. And uh, he's a man, I think, that means well or, 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 or ordinarily. Uh, so I, I do not think even that we need to quote or remind him what he said, if he said that, uh, as reported on the media. If I am leading a party that is about to go to war, I understand the, the sentiments of the people of Nigeria, inclusiveness, making sure we have not South balance, mid, uh, Muslim, we, uh, all kinds of demographic balance, uh, religious balance, ethnic balances, and all that. If I were the leader of the party, I didn't even need anybody to remind me to begin to say how we can change this mix. The South said they wanted the, uh, uh, the presidency, but it, it, the party decided against their constitution to allow it go to the North for expediency. And many people from in the party who believe in party supremacy are trying to live with that. Now, you create a situation where the hierarchy of the party is from one section of the country, from board of trustee to chairman to presidential uh, uh, candidates and all that. We don't even need an external person to tell PDP that they need to do some rejigging so as to make the party look in, uh, uh, inclusive. We're all going to campaign if we're allowed to for the party. And when you go to your constituencies to campaign, you will need to say something. And they ask you questions. What are you going to answer? Sam, you are the one fighting for a South South, uh, a South -town president, a Southeast president particularly. We don't have it. We don't have chairman. We don't have a beauty ch a chairman. We have nothing. Sam, what are you telling me? In good conscience, what should I be saying? So I don't think uh, uh, you need to have made that uh, uh, so, so promise. So in, invariably, 
So in essence, in, in essence, uh, Dr. Habua, are you is it fair to say to Senator Yocha, you should step aside now that Atiku Abubakar has emerged? If that's what he said, as I said, I see him as a man of honor, then he should follow the path of honor, if that's what he said. But I'm even going beyond that. I assume he didn't say it. If he's the leader of the party who has brought us to this point, he should make the sacrifices, do what needs to be done to make sure that Nigerians are happy with PDP, members of PDP are happy, they can bring their whole mind, their focus, and, and join the... So if he needs to step down for that to happen, he should do so. I, I mean, it's the best thing for us to be to take the necessary action that will unite the party so that we can face the... The, the, the enemy, in quotes, of course, there's no enemy here, but the opponents, uh, the, the opposing parties in the election. The, 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 the chairman of the party has a, 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 an onerous mission and responsibility to make sure the party does not break apart, that the party does not continue to um, erode or, or, or continue to, uh, you know, be divided in its seams. Nobody can go to war, which we're about to go to, with this kind of division I'm seeing and unhappiness and complaints. All Many right. of the complaints are, are yeah. under the table. So I advise uh, Dr. Iyocha, you, whom I think is a man of honor, because I have met with him a couple of hours, also expressed that to him. He should take responsibility as the father of the party. He shouldn't be arguing with anybody. He shouldn't be going with the media and responding our reply. There are, there, are, there, are, there are diplomatic ways he can deal with things without stoking more fire. He should see himself as the father. Right. He's not competing with Dr. anybody. Yeah. And take those strategic decisions that will show that he's really a leader of the greatest party, the biggest party in Nigeria, even though it's, they say, in, in Africa, but at least for Nigeria, I can say so. All right. Dr. Sam Mwambo, our presidential aspirant in the People's Democratic Party in the 2023 presidential primary. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you, Shane. God bless you. Thank you so much. Just before we go, let's tell you that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has made some redeployment of some of its senior staff. It includes redeploying the rank in Cross River State. Dr. Siri Omorogbe was now being reposted to Aquabum State, and the wreck in Edo State, Dr. Alaibo Johnson Sinkime, has been reposted to Cross River State. This is a part of uh, the ongoing restructuring and redeployment and postings in the commission, according to INEC, and 10 people are involved, including administrative secretaries and some senior members of the commission across the several states. But that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye for now.